Hey, I'm back. <laughs> a wild sauce appeared, and I've got some Kool-Aid with me to uh, help improve my mood. I finished um, Star Trek TNG. It was a go very good show. <laughs> I mean, it was fantastic. It was. I I I want to say it was a little bit better than the original series. They're close. But they are relatively on par with each other. And here's my reason why. I, I feel like one has to give some amount of credit toward um, addressing philosophy, uh, very serious philosophical matters in the 1960s. Especially through such a peculiar science fiction way that depicts practical in a sense, socialism. I mean, there, th there's no capitalist identity to the uh, to the original series at all. Even though it's it, and it's so inc from the from the uniforms, etc. Like it's implied to almost certainly be a communist state of some sort, uh, the Federation, and. Just even though there's like just like a bunch of what even though like oh God I, I I apologize I lost that chain of thought uh, you'll you'll have to get used to it because I'm in a really good place right now um like I find it interesting that uh, that like they got away with talking about like about like. The dangers of, uh, of, ooh, I don't want to talk about that. Well, okay, let's let's. Rem I am not a swerve, okay. I wanna wanna make this absolutely clear. I wouldn't say that the episode was anti-sex work. It was when you know, like there was a bunch of intergalactic, you know, online Russian brides. And Captain Mud was, you know, sending, was transporting them. It, it shows you the day. I, I don't think there's anything really anti-sex work about showing the the, I'd say, realistic dangers of it. Now that doesn't stop that that episode from being incredibly sexist. Let's face it. Like Gene Roddenberry wasn't great in that area, and you know, frankly, neither was Marx. Um. Uh, unfortunately, that that is one thing that I will favor anarchism for, and Marxism, Leninism in particular for, is like the Leninism, Marx, uh, Marxism, Leninism, like under Lenin was great because it introduced like an idealistic equality where women could join the army, women could do the same work that men did had the same rights and privileges, etc. I mean, of course there were, you know, Stalin wasn't, wasn't perfect. He, he wasn't. I'm sure uh, he, if I remember, he had some very sexist ideas. For instance, he never agreed with Krupskaya, like, ever. That's why, you know, that's why there, there's a beef between the parties as to how much involvement did Krupskaya have in, you know, writing out uh, Lenin's Last Testament? Lenin's Testament, whatever it's called. That that paper that Trotsky brought and was just like, Hey, Lenin's dead, but he told me to, to you know, let you guys know that I'm in charge now. <laughs> and once again, I think that, you know, like... And here's my ideology so far. Trotsky was pretty much just going to be Stalin. <laughs> I, like that that's that I think is something that I will fight Trots about. Is that their ideologies are too similar. There are only slight variations in it. And that that's only because, you know. And the only thing that really significantly changes between them is that, you know, Trotsky was a bit more, um, 
was a bit more dip I was a bit more uh, democratic about things. But I think that you know uh, Stalin, whatever the the people trusted him, so he could exercise as much uh, as much you know quote unquote democracy as he wanted, as much as like even an anarchist would be satisfied with. And he would still, you know, end up being able to do whatever he wants because he was able to just capture the people's hearts so well. And, you know, like, and I don't think he did a lot of bad things. He did some fantastic things. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Fight me. <laughs> he, I mean, once again, like, you know, I think it sucks that anarchists get killed and, and you know, gulagged and shit and the Bolsheviks too. Like, that was all garbage, but, if I recall correctly, they were very democratic about the process. So, really, it, it, I, and it was within their own echo chamber is another thing. That was one criticism I had of the Bolsheviks overall, is the Vanguard Party. The party that said inc incestually. I mean, I guess that incestuously, you know, that is incestuously democratic, uh, it, in which, uh, in other words, you know, the Bolsheviks have the most say, they have the most influence, and you know, it doesn't really matter how if they run unopposed, they still win. For all intents and purposes, they they are going to have their way. That's how that's how I define it, and I found that extremely problematic. I'm gonna take another sip of my Kool-Aid. Well, yes, I'm aware of the irony. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna take a hit. Um, but first, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about um, about fucking Russia, okay? Um, about the Bolsh Bolsheviks and whatnot, like this, like. I can't remember who the opposing, like, the socialist Russian Republic or whatever, the... It, it was... Hold on. What was the other party? Like, they split up the parties, and, and this is me just... This is me calling upon all of my knowledge. I could be mistaken. But there was, like, a split between the, the Bolsheviks and the, you know, excuse me, the, uh, there was another party, like I was saying, it was like Socialists of Russia or something, Party of Socialists of Russia, the so Socialist Party of Russia, I can't remember, um, let me, let me proceed, Silas, I, I can't, how dare you interrupt me, thoughts, <laughs> uh, be gone, <laughs> um, so, what is... What was I talking about? Fuck. Um, okay. So there was a, a party split. And the SRA, or whatever they were called, the other party, like, they had majority rule twice. But the Bolsheviks had, like, a... It was like a 40-60 split. And the 40 could demand a recount. And they kept recounting. I think twice. Like, yeah, they count, they recount, uh, they had to do three general elections, and then, for whatever reason, like, the Bolsheviks were just able to overrule and just say, aha, this time we won, this is the right one, we win. <laughs> like, I, I want to create this meme, I think I've talked about it before on this channel, where it's just like, where it's Homer reaching into the fucking, um, the fucking hat, um, Reaching into the top, uh, the hat of chores, and he's like, practice, 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 woo! <laughs> like, what a fucking... <laughs> like, and, and it's all Lennon's face until, like, he gets a ticket with his name on it. it it's... Oh, man. Fuck, I've got, like, both. I, I had a really nice dinner of some steak and uh, asparagus and I've got just the 
I haven't put away the sauces yet. Um, fuck. It can wait. Why would you put a fucking steak sauce on a cheeseburger? Fuck. When I say it out loud, it sounds fucking good. Oh, I'm upset. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Is this is this a craft? It's a craft product. A1 is a craft product. Motherfuckers. The motherfuckers own the fucking world, man. They're the big boy. The big parent company. Them and Coke and Disney. Except I think Disney is a different company. Maybe under Comcast. Um, actually, no. I think Comcast is a separate company. Let's see. Let's see. There's Time Warmer, Kraft, fucking... I don't think McDonald's is one. Walmart? Um, or the, there's an overarching company. Verizon. Uh, they're like 13 or 14 big heavy hitters that own everything now. And it's not great. It's not fun. You know, our ideology, it, 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 I'm very gloom and doom about all this. Don't, don't judge me. Okay, it's not like I'm pouring some steak sauce on my finger and licking it. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> hmm. Very bad idea. Ooh. Mm. Now it tastes good. The after. Ooh, the after is like so, um, it's a very sweet, uh, Ooh, it tickles my throat. <laughs> um, that's what, no, no, don't, don't. The days of the that's what she said jokes are over. You can just, you know, post my face over the orc's face in, in Lord of the Rings Return of the King. You know, the second best movie in that trilogy. Like, okay, okay. Here's my nuclear take for today. Um, Lord of the Rings, it, uh, in terms of best, Fellowship, second, Return of the King, third, Two Towers. Two Towers was a fucking snore fest. And then you get to the fucking end. The end is just so fucking cool. It's so fucking cool. The way that they just go all in, uh, in like the dam, and... I remember seeing the fucking sound work that they did. That was always like the classic go-to because, you know, they had like the jingling keys for armor because they couldn't identify like how one could produce so much metal clanking. And, you know, that's that was the fucking Foley guy's decision was like, say, I've got some keys in my pocket. Let's just... Mm, Double that up like 16 times, I think he said. What was the... the there was like a Linkin Park song, right? That also like just doubled, um, doubled instruments like over and over. Was it like Breaking the Habit or My December? No, it wasn't My December. Was it High Voltage? Oh, fuck. Because I'm pretty sure it was from Hybrid. And nobody's a, a big of fan of... We know Hybrid Theory was uh, the first one. No, that one's the best one. I'm just thinking of Meteora. Meteora was it. Man. Like, the other day I was talking to Johnny, right? And I, I'm just telling him, Man, do you know of any band that could get progressively worse, like, that just crashed and burned, just a slow tanking, like, like, uh, other than, you know, like, Linkin Park's the worst one, and I'm just thinking, like, well, let's see, you know, there's Tattoo, but, you know, Tattoo was, you know, you know, Meteora wasn't a bad album. It was just, a, uh, it was just inferior to Hybrid Theory. I'm gonna talk, I hope, 
I talk more about this subject in the next episode because now I'm really interested. I'm really interested in seeing where my thought process goes. Man, I'm a goddamn narcissist for someone so goddamn depressed. I'm like, oh boy, I can't wait to think about that. <laughs> Stay wild. <laughs> Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow.